Okay, welcome to your seat at the table. This is Rick the Fat Man, and this is Iron Crown Enterprises Middle Earth role playing game, also known affectionately as MERP, Southern Merkwood Installment Haunt of the Nurkomancer. Now, I've already previously done the northern, uh, northern part of Merkwood, and one of the things about Southern Merkwood that in the Peter Jackson's movies seemed they got a, a lot of the only pieces of it you ever see is Rose uh, uh, Rose Gobble or Gobble or however uh, uh, the wizard's uh, house is talked about in the vicinity directly around it and the local door which is the primary feature of the Merkwood and also the source of a lot of the problems and in Lord of the Rings it's not too undifferent but uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's notes, his son uh, Christopher has put some stuff out and uh, that give us a little bit more information on uh, this s geographic region of Middle Earth and I don't currently have the handy map but there's a little bit here. Uh, the big map is I got it somewhere. I you know I showed them off a couple years ago and then I put them away so I gotta figure out where, where the heck they went to. So here's a bigger map. A little not quite as colored but we got Dolgadur here. What we don't show a lot of is that Geographically speaking, the the main wood, woodland road cuts through here, the the old old road anyway, and uh, this is the one that is pretty much cut off and shut down because of influence of orcs and stuff coming from Dolgarder and and the spiders. Spiders have have really vested this section of the forest really bad. Up north, the, the woodland uh, realm, the elves keep them in check and keep them down. Uh, another portion is that we don't see in the movies, don't talk about it, is the East, the east Blight, uh, East Bite, however you want to look at it. This is a kind of a plateau area where the forest doesn't grow or as thick or developed, and back it, over various stages of the Third Age, uh, Northmen have settled here. There was there was actually a kingdom here for a while. Uh, a lot of uh, now Rohan comes up to the comes up and, and grazes their horses in these areas. You got Lothlorien and the wood and the elves over here who who influenced a lot of this area here. Uh, we're familiar with uh, the, the Falls of Reros and and. Uh, couple scenes from uh, Lord of the Rings where they go down the river and here's the Brownlands and the Wold. Uh, Fangorn Forest is up over this way. This is the area, the Brownlands, that the uh, that Treebird talks about where the Entwives went and settled and then after the and then as part of uh, a terror campaign by Sauron and uh, before the, uh, the last alliance of elves and men was formed, he burned and destroyed this area and turned it into the Brownlands. Uh, we've got the gateway down here, I guess it's not up here, it's the gateway down here to uh, the Falls of Ruros and uh, the, su the southern Anduin, as it's pronounced, I guess, nowadays, Dorun and Gondorians. At one time, at the height of, the, of Gondor's power, they had settlements and, and uh, had control over all this area down here. Uh, in part for keeping it an eye on the east because the plains are to the east and a lot of the threats that come out Gondor out of the east came up north of Mordor and swept down so they settled they sometimes prospered uh, one of the remnants the lake town uh, established by the uh, by Northmen and uh, Dale of course at Erebor which is up a part of the northern section of the of the installments if you will so there's a lot of stuff that goes on down here that's not covered in the book or in the books that much because it's not it's not important as part of the history there's a lot of stuff that goes on that went on down here that's not covered in the movies because once again it's not pertinent to the story uh, it's one of the things though that makes Middle Earth such a rich and detailed place is the fact that there's so much depth to the world itself, so much history and things have come and gone and plenty of room for play and fantasy and that's what we're all about, right? So, 
we talk about the introduction of Southern Rovanian, uh, Ro, 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 you know, Southern Rohan, right? The roads, topography, the land of Southern Rohirium, Ro, 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 no, Rovanian, I cannot pounce. Uh, I mean, I don't frame uh, Long ago, the realm of Southern Ro, Rovania, Rovania was earned the common name of the South Wil uh, Wilder Land. Uh, for de despite numerous settlements of men over the years, nature has always reigned supreme in this region of forest plains. All who enter the area, rather to travel or live out their lives, must readily de ready themselves for day-to-day -day encounters with the whims and forces of nature, or with civilization that's made its home here. Rather, the primitive uh, Bajuar, you know, uh, Bjorn's uh, folk, the savage savage orcs of Dolgadur, the stately Northmen, all have had to find ways to make their rugged ways of life respond to the greater forces of nature. Uh, we got Rose Topography, Almond Lacquer, also known as Dolgadur, half a day's walk into the forest, harsh black jagged figure features, gives it some information in history and a deeper understanding of what's going on there and how it got to be what it was, river valleys, the weather, vegetation, Flora and fauna. Flora and fauna, flora and fauna, various areas. So, this is a uh, flora and fauna of Merkwood itself, uh, flora of Taleth Harak. These plains were cultivated uh, ages ago. These plains were cultivated. So many of the grasses that thrive today have some food value, but their growing habits have shifted away from controllable forms of cultivators to wayward ways of weeds. Careful study and tending can make these plains a life sustaining region, but those entering uh, Talith Herrick for the first time, they appear barren, lifeless, and without end. Flora of the Vales of the Anduin. Fauna of the Southern Merkwood and Vales of the Anduin. Fell Beasts. Fauna of the Terra. Talith Harak. The inhabitants of Southern Ro Rovanian. Rohiri it's not Rohirian, by the way, it's Rovanian and damn stupid pronunciations. Gondor's Eastern Lands. That's the plain area to the east of the southeast of the wood of the Merkwood. The vast Tunnel Rock has always been a land of changing tides. Residents more often than not roam the, with the seasons or move with the land has been exhausted. Frequent visitors find lightly guarded expanses ideal for travel. Few uh, obstacles lie in the way, those seeking richer lands on uh, either side. The grassy plains and gently rolling hills stand as a wide highway for wanderers and evading hosts. Before the return of the Dunedain to the Middle Earth, little was recorded in the way of managed histories. No one remembers exists the passage of folk across the plains. Common men, no doubt, came and went, but their trails have been obscured with founding Gondor, however, roads, etc. Conquest of the, of the, quote, East. We all know the stories on that one. Settlers from Gondor. Home regions, ecosystem, political structure. A lot of stuff in here, you know. You really deep backstory for a GM to work with. The rise of Vito Gavia and Gondor's kin strife. Peace and the Plague. The Northmen. The Bajabar or the, you know, Bajoran's uh, bear people information. The Baronings. You know, the, the Bajabar and or Baronings. Racial uh, origin, a collection of small Northman tribes, family, family groups, opposable loose clans, etc., etc. The Ethereum or future Rohirrim, urban Northmen, the Woodmen of Southern Merkwood. So you get all the basic human groupings in here and information neath. Then we got the Elves of Southern Merkwood, which there are a few, since uh, especially up and down based on how much activity is going on at Dolgador at the time. Excuse me on that, it's just uh, getting a dry throat. Easterlings, and they break them down, so we get the Asterix, the Sagath, Legacy of the Dwarves, the Orcs, the Urkamarxers, the Nurkamancers Orcs, and some things. I like. I've always liked about these books. It's just so rich in information. So, 
when I was younger, when I bought these things, I read them and I reread them. I read them quite a lot, and for me, right, it, it was, it's like a living movie or a TV. I, I, I can see words and color and envision in my head when I read. I always have. It's part of that overactive imagination thing. The beautiful thing about it was, is I've read Lord of the Rings every year since I was in my early, you know, eight, nine years old when I first discovered it and started reading. And back then I read it a lot more often. I read it three or four times a year. Uh, it was a go-to. And then as I got older, I'd still make a habit of reading my way through the series at least once a year. Uh, and these books, these game supplements and stuff from Middle Earth for Merp, really enriched it. See, now, you younger generations, and us old, older hats too, we can go to YouTube and we can find video after video after video, some very well made, some very colorful, some very uh, talented individuals with good speaking uh, abilities and video creating abilities and software and so on and stuff have turned in all that stuff to a visual audio supplement. So if you ever want to run a game or a campaign in Middle Earth, there is a slew of stuff. You can go and you can find two or three different entries on a particular location or thing and be very well prepared to run it and be and be in the spirit of the game, in the spirit of Tolkien's world. Uh, for us older folks who didn't have before YouTube came along, uh, that's what these these game supplements is. One of the reasons they're so detailed and so richly de devised. And I can honestly say that literature, the the, the movies and, and novels and things like that, they enhance our game material in many ways, in a lot of subtle ways that we don't we take for granted. But they can also distract detract from them and weaken them. And I've seen modules and I've seen supplements that were poorly written, poorly not so entertaining. Uh, because the people who wrote them in their in their mind in their head they already knew all this stuff and they make the leap of faith that you will too and that you don't need all of that extra stuff in there well we didn't always have that and some of these especially merp they did a very good job these are very entertaining by themselves i i can tell you that i know that some of us have a hobby uh, who, who sit back and we pull these games off our shelves or get new games and we read them for the sake of entertainment. We're reading them to read them and the information and the backstory and all that stuff. So whenever I read these and then I read Lord of the Rings, I under, have a deeper, richer understanding of Tolkien's works and his story. And the background is much more... You know, when they travel through desolate areas of ruined castles and this, that, and the other thing... My mind fills in those missing blanks because a lot of this non-canon material and canon material that was pieced together over time fills in those blanks. So I understand when they're, you know, the ruins of, of, of uh, uh, oh, when they go to Bree, I understand Bree is not just this raggy looking town on the edge of nowhere. It's actually a small a small kingdom or community of, of towns, mostly hobbits and halflings that are independent from the Shire and actually predate the Shire itself. Uh, Weathertop, Almond Soul, I understand what in my, because I have Almond Soul, I have Weathertop, I know what it looked like in its glory, so to speak, and it never looked glorious. It was always this hodgepodge of various additions added on over the ages, with each new addition being much more much less impressive and much less uh, constructed as the original works. Just the reason why Orthiac or you know Isengard is so imposing and, and is because it's a second age relic or using advanced technology, advanced construction techniques and material, understanding of material and a little bit of magic uh, from Numer. Uh, the, when the when the men were the top of their their apex of their existence before the long slow slide or that sort of technology you don't think about it just how much technology there is in Lord of the Rings or was 
at one time but these supplements these extra game books these sometimes not canon material really serve to enrich my experience and understanding of the world in general so darkness under the Nurkomancer talks about Sauron's presence the nature of the Nurkomancer his servants the trolls Radagast Rose Gobel you know looks much different than uh, what they portrayed him in Peter Jackson which is fine uh, they is an Istari I actually like frankly I like Peter Jackson's take on him was much better it's the same pretty much abilities and, and habits and stuff it's pretty close and I often have wondered just if if any of this had played any role in creating uh, the movies or the writers and Peter Jackson himself but we'll you know, I've heard rumors, but you can't prove anything. So we got the Lords of the Free Peoples. The, uh, these are NPCs if, that are important in the region at the time that you're adventuring. Then we got places of note: Woodman Town, daily life at Woodman Town, homes among uh, the Baronings, the Northman's homestead at the Plains, Rose Goble's structure. See how the picture here of Rose Gobel, not too terribly different from what we see in the movie. I mean, it is significant. There is some difficult differences, but there's a lot of similarities there. Entryways and tunnels of Dol Gadur, Dol Gurd itself, the Necromancer and his stats, if you really want to have an encounter with him. The throne room, Befouled Dungeon, Dol Gadur, its history. In fact, originally it was created as a, there was a tie of both the dwarves and elves and men all have a tie to this thing at one point or another before um, and then Sauron in and out all the time. Dolgadur, basic layout, rooms and stuff that give you a lot to work with, you know, a couple of the Nuzgal who are in charge of it when Sauron's not there usually anyway. A lot of material here for Dolgadur considering it's one of the larger hearts of Southern Mirkwood. It's not surprising. Uh, Sibur Fanon there of the Seer. So Sibur Fanon is the home of the laboratory of Huna and the Seer. Long believed to be quite insane by a few who are even aware of his existence. The house is actually quite beautiful. Several graceful curving balconies laying horizontal from the jagged peak. The sheer side of the hill is capped by three towers. Their base is fused with natural rock. So here's another NPC for an encounter. A uh, Gondorian outpost, an asterisk hold. This is the asterisk. Fortification designs are unconventional. Bears, special note, their technique, whenever possible, is to utilize a natural hill. And by terracing the sides, create series of walls reinforced by wooden buttressing. Not uncommon technique for building on the plains. Uh, challenges for game players, player character possibilities. You now, if you're looking for a little miniature backstory, an elf from Lauren learning the learning of the wanting of the Northland's kingdom in the uh, eastern east brings a troop of elves back in, into Mirkwood Forest, hoping to find the ancient elven ring of such and such. A dwarf from the Iron Hills who comes to Dol Gadur following a dream vision which he learned that a wise and ancient dwarf was still entrapped by orcs in the mountain. A hobbit from across the river Anduin who wanders into Mirkwood seeking to learn the forest herbs and magical parts. That's another thing I, I, I touched on here and I, I glazed over it. Uh, we know from the movies in a book that, that Smeagol or, or Gollum uh, originated from the Vales of the Anduin Valley to the western side, so between the, the eastern Winston Mountains and the river uh, north of Loch Lauren, there were a number of halfling communities and villages and clans living in those areas and some of the more remote sections, and that's where he originally came from. And it wasn't all that many decades ago, and it is implied, and it's of course never mentioned in the books or the novels or the movies, that they're still there. So some more rugged versions 
of the Shrier just not on that grand scale. There's still halflings, mostly uh, stores who like to be by the water and stuff like that, who live in the in the Anduin Valley north of La Foran in these kind of lonely, out-of-the-way corners of the area. Because the territory is very vast. There's lots of room where people can grow and small communities can thrive and rarely, if ever, rub shoulders with the neighbors and if they, with the halfling's ability to kind of keep the the hobbits are known for being quiet and uh, unobtrusive when they want to be, so it would not be very hard for them to have a nice thriving little community here and there, uh, out of the way, right? And so potentially, you know, you're halfling from the Shire because you're following up on a on a family, you know, a family story about how they 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 originally came from someplace over the mountains by the great one by the big great river and you wanted to go and see for yourself and then discover there's still people there still members of your long lost clan it's possibilities right so you know it is what it is and like i said these are great great supplements great books even if you don't run middle earth the role-playing game system i've used these exhaustedly extensively by using Dungeons and Dragons space rules. You can use any fantasy set of fantasy rules for the most part and just overlay it over the war the material, the source material. Because the source material is rich in by itself. The mechanics secondary, in my opinion. So till next time, game on.